Vlad Sepish would be a footnote to history, perhaps remembered somewhat for his cruelties, were it not for his unique relationship with Mehmet Fatih, the Conqueror, Kayasir in Rum, Caesar. Raised side by side at the imperial court, along with other vassal hostages of the Ottoman Empire. Mehmet claimed the title Fatih when he conquered the Byzantine Empire with the fall of Constantinople on May 29, 1453. The ancient city-state of Byzantium had first fallen to the Greeks, then under the Romans had become Constantinople, and now it had fallen for a third and final time, becoming thereafter Istanbul. Raducho Frumos is recorded as one of the hundreds of field commanders with the Sultan at the city's fall. Mehmet transferred the capital of the Ottoman Empire from Adrianople to Istanbul, erecting the magnificent Topkapi Palace to be his court. While Radu was a voivode to the Wallachians, he was a pasha, a type of bey or lord to the Ottoman Empire. He was important enough to the Sultan to be granted quarters within the Topkapi Palace itself, and Radu Chofrumos was known to keep an exile Wallachian court filled with boyars loyal to him. There weren't any of those left in Wallachia. Dracula had dispensed with them as he had dispensed with everyone who displeased him, harshly. While Dracula had ties of faith, marriage, and treaty with Hungary, he was nominally still a subject to the Ottoman Empire, but since retaking his throne, he had refused his tithe. By law, Vlad Dracula was bound to produce gold and 500 boys to be sent to the Ottoman elite Janissary Corps for training. At first, Dracula begged the Sultan's pardon, arguing that he was simply too impoverished by war to make payment, and in Dracula's defense, flimsy though it may be, Vlad Dracula was always fighting someone. Retaking his throne and slaying his family's usurpers was hardly enough for Prince Vlad. He personally commanded cavalry raids into Transylvania, where no less than three pretenders to his throne were sowing revolt. The least of these was Basarab Lyota, seemingly a royal bastard of the Dineshti clan. His legitimate little brother, Dan III, last true-born son of Dan the Great, had considerably more support. Vlad Kalugaru, Dracula's own bastard half-brother, had the support of the wealthy Catholic Saxons and Secklers. The Impaler never met the monk in battle, but he did kill most of his followers, effectively ending his claim to the throne, at least for the moment. Lyota too yielded his claim, and his soldiers, to Dan III, without much of a fight, in exchange for money. Dan III took what forces he could muster and marched on Tirgavishta itself, but he did not get very far. He was taken alive, and Dracula had a priest read liturgical rites over him whilst he forced Dan to dig his own grave. He then cut the pretender's head off personally, an honor, Prince Dracula thought it, and by his own standards, certainly a mercy. Dracula is sometimes misremembered as just, harsh but fair, friend to the commoner. He was not. He burned the poor and destitute alive for being a burden to his state. He hanged, impaled, immolated, and had chopped apart like so much cabbage, Romanian, Turk, German, noble, and peasant. His cruelty knew no bounds, but he was particularly harsh to women. Women condemned of adultery under his reign had their offending sex cut out by his command. Lesser offenders, such as unchaste widows, might be granted the mercy of losing but a nipple or a nose. He was said to have had his own mistress vivisected and displayed to the public for lying about her pregnancy. Let the world see where I have been and where my fruit lay, he said. Sometimes the condemned before him were given the choice to join his personal executioners rather than face them. These executioners, the Armashi, his axes, were his personal enforcers a mix of Romanian, Turkish, Hungarian, and Gypsy, either press-ganged into grim work or attracted to it by inclination. Most were not so fortunate. One Gypsy man objected to impalement as against his cultural law, so Dracula had him boiled in a giant kettle 
and fed to his family. It was the second known use of Dracula's kettle. When, at last, he had sufficiently chastened Denesht and Draculesht, terrorized the boyars and the peasants of Transylvania and Wallachia, murdered all rivals, or at least all of their followers, finally, finally, Dracula was ready to provoke Mehmet. The Sultan's emissaries demanded Dracula submit himself to Mehmet and produce his long overdue tribute of gold and recruits. Dracula asked these envoys to remove their hats in his presence. Raised as he was in the Ottoman court, he knew full well that they could not remove their turbans, and so he ordered the turbans nailed to their heads, honoring Turkish tradition as he had honored gypsy tradition, or for that matter, Romanian, with death. Mehmet would eventually march with the largest army he'd raised since Constantinople. Dracula conducted a guerrilla war, fleeing to the Carpathian Mountains with his followers and their entire crops and herds, but striking out in the night. He used his knowledge of the Ottoman languages and customs, lessons for which he had taken whippings trying to resist, to enter Turkish encampments and wreak mayhem. He sent the ill, suffering from leprosy, syphilis, and other diseases into the Ottoman camps and had them intermingle in a type of proto-germ warfare. In one famous night raid, which Dracula once more personally commanded, a small cavalry force tore into the Turkish imperial camp by torchlight. In the darkness and confusion, the Grand Vizier's tent was mistook for the Sultan's own. Dracula and Mehmet escaped one another that night. Few escaped Dracula. He impaled thousands. In a brutal campaign of what can only be called ethnic cleansing, Dracula murdered more than 20,000 Bulgarians and Turks, almost all of them civilians, by his own admittance in a letter he wrote to Matthias Corvinus, son of John Hunyadi and now King of Hungary. When at last Mehmet arrived at Tirgovishta, still capital of Wallachia, he was astonished to find thousands upon thousands impaled a forest of the dead. Where the line of impaled stopped and the tree line began, bodies dangled from branches. The Sultan was astonished, demoralized, and frankly, defeated. He abandoned Wallachia, leaving Radu Chelfrumos to win through politics what Mehmet the Conqueror could not with his massive army. Radu promised stability, that no boys would be forced to join the Janissary Corps, that no retaliation would be meted on those that stood down then. The strategy worked. Dracula had spent the lives and resources of his people on his vendettas. He had alienated the old families, embarrassed Hungary with his atrocities, and enraged the Ottoman Empire, all whilst meeting out justice even Dracul would have thought draconian. As Radu's troops moved in on Castle Dracula, legend says that Dracula's beloved, learning of the Turkish approach, threw herself from the balcony into the stream of the Argish below, now known as the Raoul Domne, the Princess's River. Dracula escaped Radu's new order, but Hungary quietly put him away for many years. Dracula remarried during this exile, this time to Justina, the king's aunt. The boyars connived as they were wont to do before and after Dracula. Radu was usurped by his Dinesh rival Lyota, and then he usurped Lyota, and so on for several turns. Lyota had Hungarian support, and Radu, of course, had Ottoman. But combat was minimal, and war was avoided, until Radu died of syphilis. Basarab Lyota immediately switched sides to the Ottomans, and Matthias Corvinus let Dracula once more off his leash. Dracula of Wallachia, Stefan of Moldavia and the new Transylvanian voivode Istvan Batari quickly drove the Dinesh forces from the land. But Lyota preferred exile to death and escaped once again. Prince Vlad's final rule, however, would be as brief as his first. He died in the new year of 1477, cut down by a Turkish agent, likely one in his own retinue, in a grim mirroring of his father's own fall. His head was preserved in a jar of honey and sent to the Sultan, a symbol of the enduring victory of Mehmet the Conqueror over the man who had replaced John Hunyadi as the terror of the Ottoman Empire, Vlad Sepish, Kaziglu Bey, 
The Impaler. <laughs>